doing uh, the near of the replicants, the replicantation of nears. And I'll uh, be doing, uh, hopefully continuing a little, but I'll, before I continue, I'll just do, uh, uh, I think, some side quests. But uh, doing them, of course, it's, it's just a lot of fetch quests, so I'll just be doing those before I actually uh, do much. Could have done it before, but you know, there's stuff up here. What? What are those tutorials? Like, I never really, uh... Yeah, what's the dark blast? Oh, oh yeah, that's that one, of course. But I, I've never really... Uh, I, I don't know, really know where the... Tutorials... What is this? Like, hello? Is that it? But why did I, why would I unlock that? Okay, that's... I don't really get it, but... Yeah, I'll be doing uh, some side quests and then continue the story. Alright? Awesome, cool. Uh, taking a look uh, through uh, our mailbox and we got this letter that says... Uh, today was awesome. Provola made me this huge cake that was really yummy and everyone in the village has been wishing me happy birthday. It's fun. I feel like a princess or something. I don't feel sick at all today. In fact, I almost forgot I had this disease, so maybe you can forget about it too and come back home now. Question mark. That's kind of sad. Like, even though the chances of, of her dying are like astronomically high, I'm still like, you know, damn. It kind of sucks, you know. I have uh, been doing the side quests, and uh, I'm, I've uh, done a lot of them. And I'm now doing the Yona one, and I found this one pretty, uh, pretty good go. last time. I made it all by myself. Okay. Is this a cake? Yep. Popola taught me how to bake one. With watermelon, pumpkin, and normal melon. What the fuck is normal melon? I don't know. I made it for you in secret. Wow. Because I feel like just. Getting this, you know, deep into our bond with this character who probably will die. Wow, Yona, this is, um, <laughs> well, it's it a wasn't, surprise for it sure. It wasn't all that great the last time, you know? Come on, try it, try it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is so good. Wow, okay. Yay, you're always super busy, so okay. I wanted to make you something to help keep up your strength. Thanks, bro. That's really sweet of you, Yona. Thank you. Sure. Actually, oh, shit. I need like seven cakes. Let's so there's go. tons of leftovers. How, how the fuck you make seven cakes? Hello? The life of an elder sibling <laughs> continues to be a trying experience. True. You're telling me. Nice. Why am I getting 7,000 notifications? Cool. Anyway, uh, do I have anything else to do? Only that one. Only, well, that and uh, and the uh, surprise uh, of the lack of music. I turned it down to listen to some other music. Not that the music isn't good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, no, uh, the music is very good. Uh, some of the best in in recent times that I've played. I mean, it's uh, uh, currently I have, of course, been playing some uh, Shadow of the Colossus, some Final Fantasy VII and all that. Uh, let me just do a save. I don't know how, you can check like, yeah, it's been an hour since I last saved. I, I don't know how long I've spent, I think I've spent like two hours or something doing side quests. I don't know how many are left. I know that at some point the game... Does like a jump cut or a, sorry a uh, time skip? I don't know when that exactly is, and I don't know uh, like like I want to do all the side quests. That's for sure. Uh, he was over here. Yeah, and I got the sun that was here. Nobody's here. I believe they left us a note. Where? Thanks to your help, my son has returned to take up the family business. We decide to move to a new land to begin a new one. Probably train them to carry out well, the family name. That's sort of. Anticlimactic. I guess. I wonder what the business was anyway. Running away. Hey, are you friends with the people who lived here? I. Oh, they're. Oh, they're criminals. No, not really. Why? 
Because the goddamn bastards borrowed money from everyone in the village <laughs> and then skipped town. <laughs> Shit. Apparently, their son ran away because he wanted to escape a life of crime. Oh. But then some idiot <laughs> brought him back. <laughs> I well, see. I guess we know the family business now. The thing, <laughs> we did not even get paid for this absurd oh, misadventure. Yeah, oh, well. Perhaps we should tally it up as an expensive yeah. life lesson and move on. I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't uh, get paid, but I... Wait, I don't have any side quests right now, then. Yeah, I have, like, all of them. Uh, wait, maybe I can, yeah, go to, uh... Uh, go in here. And see if she has any for me that I can do at some point. She usually does. Oh, you... Which job should wait, I give I have you one? first? Uh, the pride of a oh, lover. Oh, brother. This yeah. one's rich. Some guy wants to give a gift to a woman, okay. and he needs your help. Cool, sure. I wrote down the client's location on... Listen, whenever she does this, right? Where's this? See from. Okay, sure. Whenever she gives me a quest, it doesn't, like, load in properly. Okay, no, I'll actually do the... The main thing now. Because I've been doing a lot, and I, I'm guessing that I'm actually nearing the time skip. I have no, I've been notified of the quest that kind of that you need to look out for before uh, moving on completely. Where the fuck am I going? I'm going on here, I guess. Yeah, actually, I don't know where I was the last time I played. I actually think I didn't, I don't even think I had the beast thing at that point. Yeah, but I've only been doing side quests. Like, I have not <laughs> moved forward in the story at all uh, since then, but I, I've just been doing a hell of side quests. Uh, so yeah. Wait, where am I going? Also, I don't know if, uh, I don't remember if this was like in the last one, but I I hope it was. But at this the boar quest suddenly it was just dead. Like suddenly I had just completed the boar quest. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, I have not gone here yet. Oh, what's that? Hey boys. Oh, it's just royal fern. Geba. That sounds. I feel like I think the more word like the more syllables the better it is. Yeah, I think it's just an upgraded version of my Geb. Uh, yeah, look. Yeah, so the more syllables, the better. So we'll end off with like, Gebalalele chum bum bum and Lucas su do do do, like whatever. Like that sounds super racist when I say it like that, but you know. I think the longer the words, the better. Is that, so this is Geba Lugues, whatever that means. Yeah, I'm just putting it on all of them if I'm. What? Wait, what? Oh, because that doesn't do damage, so it's actually the best word is literally none of them. That's weird. Do I have any new for the... I don't know if I have all the weapons. I'll have to... That's also something that I have to check out, because I, I've heard that you want, that you want all the weapons. Uh, in your arsenal, if you want to. Oh, a new one? Oh wait, it's only a... Uh, it's only a 2-1. So, I don't know how... Uh, where is he? I should do the... Oh, well, I'm gonna leave. I will head out to this place. Whatever that is. You know, I'm still wondering what happened to the world. Maybe you should play Dragon Guard to find out. At least get the ending where the, that like leads to near. Isn't it crazy how near is just the byproduct of a one ending of a game that, like from my understanding, people much prefer the new games just from looking at, you know, general reviews and all that. It sure is quiet here. Such you know. silence birds ill. There's trouble on the way. I'm certain of it. Yeah, for sure. You know, a little oh, optimism now and then wouldn't hurt, Vice. Such cheek. Wait, wait, wait. 
Hello? Beware. Oh, this is the city? Oh, shit. Beware. The words. The words? The words, what do you the mean? words that I put on my weapons. Contagious words. Those who dream. Okay. Those who dream? Hold a moment. There is a strange okay. new sensation in my mind. Why is that so big? Why is why is this voice rose in a quizzical way? It is not quizzical. What? What's going on? <laughs> the villager's body shuddered as she slowly opened his eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. I mean, we'll try. Who are you? What? We heard something happened to this <laughs> village, so we came to see if we could help. The mayor st stared at Oliver and Bias. You can speak to me. I must have caught you in my dream. In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Why stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching now slightly. See here. He Are said, you saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes, said the mayor. I think you have. In other words, said Argumon, we've caught the death dream. Before the mayor could confirm a uh, near suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Ridiculous, preposterous, completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't <laughs> even recall falling asleep. That's just how the death dream works. I was said. Don't polite the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, <laughs> fool. What, what is this? The mayor twisted his mouth in an embarrassed grimace. Grimace? The grimace shake? Then quickly changed the subject to who Nier had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream. Said the mayor. A certain conversation. A specific word. Something. Doing it like this reminds me like a lot of... Uh, of Wes Anderson films, good films, highly recommended. Uh, he recently did a lot of short stuff with Netflix, so I recommend to check that out. A knee and Vice had racked their brains, but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter, too many meaningless conversations. Grimoire Vice does not engage in meaningless conversations. <laughs> To me, suggesting that Vice chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated <laughs> gas bag sorry, of a narrator. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It has demolished it utterly. Irritated, Vice looked skyward as if searching for answers in the house. I was doing no such thing. <laughs> oh. Just leave me alone already. Okay. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to near like a contagion. Wait, said Nier suddenly, did someone just say Contagion? Yes, I believe so, what of it? Well, that villager told us to watch out for Contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing his stalled device aside in the process. He must have said something, right? Asked the mayor, some specific combination of words. What was it? It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or, or what the hell was it? A sheep? Cried Vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. Oh. After a few more minutes of thought, Nier's face suddenly lit up. I, I remember, he said. Those who dream. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this, uh, at this, the mayor produced a big sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before finally nodding his approval at Nier. That sounds right, he said, as a stray sheet of paper fell to the ground. My notes, are, uh, my notes also mention something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil sh uh, stub tracing lines across a long piece of paper. For the last month I've done nothing but study the disease you call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect the people from whatever comes along. But I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace pa uh, crossing his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. I immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping it off the tip. I'd 
tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized I was locked inside my own dream, I've been looking for a way out. But I do not think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there is an exit, I would know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular. In particular, sorry. And it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. I won't stop trying until it happens. Nia nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second, I did not. Look, if we can't be of any help. No, if we can be of any help, said Nia, just ask. Now hold on, I did not say that. Silence, cried Vice. The Grimoire looked from near to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Vice's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, mayor. You told us that nothing can exist in this dream without your knowing of it. Why can this not be like explained in the normal conversation? Did okay, sure. But yet you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived. Yes. The mayor slowly raised his head, realizing. Realization dawned in, on his face. Oh my god, he said, you're right, you're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Vice, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt uh, 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 as if he could breathe again. He almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two. They call it the departing problems of Vi Nia and Vice. We're all counting on you. As Nia slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. But where? Nia's mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in no time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed around him. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed determined to twist his angle. More than once he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough of bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Argimo to pick up the pace, and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Vice spotted something that about legless turtles being more inept, adept at navigating the environment, Nia snapped. Okay, Vice, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Nia leaned against the tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid force be so big? He muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, cacophony. How do you say that? Cacophony or cacophony? I don't know. Cacophony, cacophony, mm. of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at a volume that. <sighs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Rattled his teeth. Near slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Vice, what's going on? Near could see Vice's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed. Forced howl, and then just as Nia's eyes seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed the hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. <laughs> as the insect symphony dimmed and not a disabled, uh, Nia began to. It's like patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it feels so forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? I kind of want to search this up as to not do it wrong. Uh, 
happen with it is lacking near. Is the correct answer is just my question. I want to go with this one. Yeah. Uh, okay. The answer is a secret. Inwardly furious, the vice left the test to him near side and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Uh, right? The sound of the insect stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest started to grow party before, near like a rippling wave, opening a new path. The forest orphan pots are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Pas pleased at passing the test, near moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind, as long as they were on a path the journey had purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, huh? said Nia after a bit. Weiss spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of the forest for some happy pet you can sell with your friend. We have no idea where this path leads. Uh, as Weiss finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Nia picked up a small, a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Weiss. <laughs> sorry, sorry again, sorry again. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of a spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. Alright. I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. Who am I? Absurdly easy, but why is now answering? Near can his teeth and try not to reach out for, to strangle his command. He's right after all. This one's pretty easy. In the front end of the window, class, when night falls, I vanish. What am I? I wanna. I wanna. I to, that must be sunlight. I don't think. I don't think it could be anything else on check. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I actually. I. I yeah. Sunlight. A plume of water suddenly bursts from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. Okay, hold on. In all my years, said my softly, I've never been seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried Nier, awaking Vice from his days. There's a house or something over there. Uh, where was I? Oh, there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Neil walked over and pounded on the door. Whoa. After a minute of solid banging, oh, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape while his face was obscured by mist. Um, began near before he could do get any further. The cloak man held him hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning at two at noon, but in the night with three, what am I? He tried to ask the cloak man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Weiss, it seems we must answer this riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said near. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon. And then that I'm free. What? I have four legs in the morning. What does this mean? Is it a man? I mean, we don't really know much about these. But, uh, I'm sure it will. But in the night we're free. Free legs. <laughs> Four legs, like that kind of moves that uh, from it. I'm gonna say a man. Wait, I didn't. Oh no, I didn't look. Oh no, it's the correct answer. It's the correct answer. Oh, that's awesome. The Mister saw from the cloth figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. Y you're the mayor! Cried out. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the man you know. Now, listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry, what was that mean? What does that mean? It will make sense in time. 
At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Neil watched, mist seep out from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Nia and Vice returned to the forest entrance, they find the male leaning against the tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Uh, good gravy, he cried. You made it. You actually made it back. His hand grasped Nia's hand Nier's and Nier's <laughs> and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket. Pumping, we're pumping, we're banging, we're... Yeah, cool. While his right seized right spider head cover and swung him through the air. Gah, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool. We have not even told you if we were successful or not. The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Uh, Nier withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death of the dream seal, he said. At least, I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Argimor filled him in on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Nier cocked his head. Okay, hang on a second, this is crazy, why would you just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool, fighting against the rules of this place's utility itself. Nier and the mayor obediently uh, reclined atop the greasy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Vice? It is words that control the death dream, which allow us to move on from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then we sleep, sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio find their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. It's the first time, began Amir, the first time I have felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were caught by a loud, long yawn. <sighs> and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awake, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt figure, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had awakened from their dream. Agamo shook the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an odd voice. We did. I'm back, he blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through our village, and I wanted to. Well, I wanted. I thought I could uh, figure out how to stop it, but I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. He started to stand and collapse back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if trying to remember how they worked, and glanced at Nia and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Your life may take some getting used to, said the mayor as a, a, a wry smile across his lips. You shall relearn in a short order, I'm sure, said Vice. For now, you should return home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying instead. I on, on the feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. Uh, the mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village, the village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, my advice. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. His head. Shook his head. Oh my god. Not the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as, sealed, as a sealed verse. Argument and, and Vice could not contain their surprise. It seemed the gold had been uh, found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Vice, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Nier mentioned the strange man uh, who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left with them. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? An Austin party started standing in the space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before too. Nier tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figured it was just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Nier gave the mayor an odd smile, but inadvertently his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words, and what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. Oh, thank you oh, so much. Thank God, yeah, I agree. Now I can finally return to a normal life. Yeah. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. True. I know. 
That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter oui. what. We. Oui. Some magical spikes on the ground to impale enemies. Uh, excuse me, we. Oui. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. It took a whole lot of reading, though. Yes, all a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. I mean, we were told to come Don't here. Don't overthink advice. We were told to come here by Pablo, you know. Oh no, is there more reading? Oh fuck, shit. Uh, I wanna try a dark execution, execution thing. Oh, and with that I need to uh, put the words on my dark execution. Let me try it out. Oh, I've seen that one before. I mean, I think this is the story. No, wait, that's not this. No, I, I need to leave. Oh, let me check. This person must be drinking. It would appear. Uh, yes. Can't say I'm very excited to go back there. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is it more reading? Oh, fuck me. I prefer send it with death and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it'll sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison, is tucked beneath a stairway in the long unused catacombs of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here. Wind is a forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes, and eternity slips by in a single tickle of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say. My savior. I claw at the door of the jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help. I laugh. I sob. Surely this is a product of my adult mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cry, for the love of all the gods, help me. Impossibly, I hear the sound of a lock being torn out and falling to the floor. As the door slowly creaks open, I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy in a floating book before the light pours inside. My eyes, accustomed to blackness, explode with pain and I am forced to turn away. Who are you, I ask, shaking hands, covering my face. How have you come to this place? I am Grimoire Weiss. This is near. Long have we been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one known as Nier extends his arm, uh, his hand, and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes, eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears are keen as ever, and they recognize this the shadow sounds of heaven rain. Staccato, staccato. I, I never thought. To hear that again, I whisper. Would this, would that this were not such a terrible storm? Oh, no, I don't get it. Said Grim Eyes. Look at your feet. I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and lapping at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each moment we delay. If we do not make good our escape, we shall all drown in this castle. We know you are weak, but you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, that long forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers, no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are amazed, twisting upon themselves like the endless entrails of a giant. I squint down at the, at the dim corridors and proceed north. Oh, at the end of the corridor. I found a row of twenty gorgeous canop canopied beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Searching for the door to the next room, I come upon a shapeless mass of grey matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch the piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drifts away in the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses. I face a mountain of charred and crumbling corpses. I look from it to the beds and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. 
someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know, and sanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness. I find myself opening the door and leaving the most terrible of rooms. I squint down the dim corridors. Oh no, what now? Hold on. I need to go east here. Yeah, there's a guy here. This is the good the gun continues. Uh, north. I squint down the dim corridors. East, north. North, east, north, east. Oh, it's east. I, fi I find myself in the hall. A great hall with only the sounds of rain for comfort. Or a locked red carpet squishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there I behold a beautiful dining table, upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a fantastic feast. They still call it china? Is china a thing that we know of in this one? As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a dinner guest. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the true of the man dawns upon me, I recoil in horror. The host of the fetus feast is a corpse, as all the invited guests, an army of foul, wriggling insects have made homes in their remains. And this is the movement I saw. The once splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a moment to steady my shaking hands and slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is a mistake, for the chairs prove to be even more terrible than the feast itself. Each one is covered in a layer of spikes that run from the seat up the back and down the arms. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. For if not, it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasps frantically at the possibility that these souls had committed some terrible crime for which this was the punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no crime at all. There would be no tomorrows for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed north. Against all hope, we make it to the front door. Break it down, someone cries, and so I give myself the effort. In tandem with near and grim allies, I slam my body against the thick, sturdy door. On the third try, it gives way and we find ourselves sprawled on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat, the clouds above are still dark and foreboding, but to the west I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you? I cry as tears join the rain on my cheeks. I, I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly notice that my dress is in shadows and sheepishly try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress? I ask Weiss. Then you are a woman, madame. I am. I proffer the two a smile. I suppose that comes as something as of a surprise thing as how I exist only in form of words. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite meta. I can see that the one known as Nier is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description, but he hides it well with a nod and a shrug the three of us set forth to our awakening. But behind us an awakening of another kind is taking place. Black smoke, smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment the castle's windows shadow with a mighty roar and fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch an awe, uncountable black shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to their new life as shades. Hmm. Weird. Hmm. Hmm. You have anything to say about that? Uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. Wait, that was it? Hello? Thank you so much for- I never want to have a tr- I see. Uh, I know there's one over here. How many are there here? Oh, there's only three. Oh, I'm, I really- I think I should do it then. You know, like, even though it's probably not the most exciting, but I think I should do it, you know? 
Okay. I mean, I'm scared to talk to you, but... And another victim. Yep. Yes. I figured a book like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. <laughs> Even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. Oh no. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance. The tall form scraping against the sky. Vice and Nier had never seen such a sight. Their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Those buildings must be huge if we oh, can see them voices. from this far away. Nice. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage, he said. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Oh. Near nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Near lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. Oh, we only had voices. Why? I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way m mm, might make it easier for you to bear. He glanced at Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Nia's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried to not to look further than the next step ahead because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We're definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Nia lifted his gaze, suddenly he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and Eyes wide open at his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, as the wise preposterous. I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us, look, the sun is reflecting of it. Without waiting for a response, Argimo Ar sprang to life, sorry, near sprang to life and bounded toward the site. What in the? There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. A mirage. He closed his eyes and sighed, his wife floated up behind him and chuckled soft. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Nia shook his head, bewildered, suddenly pointed off in the distance. His eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is, I just missed it. Look, it's right there. Nia sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Nia came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off and searched for it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to Nia and struck him in the face with his cup. Enough, you blithering idiot. Stop this at once. There is no water here. Nia's face clouded. There, there isn't? There is not, and perhaps next time you'll listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seemed to have revived in the city of art. Neil looked up, stretched up, before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. The journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Neil, completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed. From roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up, uh, stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with planes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? said Nier. Where are the people? Where are the houses? 
Perhaps the line is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Oh, uh, trains. Wait, statues with... Wait, buildings? Skyscrapers? I've, like, it said like some had point. I've, are you talking about skyscrapers? Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green. Thank God we street with street lights. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I think they're seeing skyscrapers, trains, and street lights. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they find a great array of smaller ones. Some are covered in glass or brick. Yeah, it's skyscrapers. But many were composed of materials that never encountered the sheer variety of colors and styles. Yeah, more staggering. They, they moved to the to more urban area. Uh, so. When able to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Leah and Weiss eventually fell silent. At the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Yeah, the others were skyscrapers. Uh, and houses. Arkmo, uh, sorry, near other than sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. I mean, in this world, that would kind of technically be. Oh, Lord. This is like, what, 10,000 years after? Something that was already slightly in the future? The three statues were indistinguishable except for a single word chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. Okay. As Nier moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures, aligning, uh, aligning, alighting on the statue's shoulder. Uh, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies, so I have to find the real one then. With that, the bird departed as massive, uncued, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Argimo. Sorry, said Nier. They're alive. The triplets uh, bowed low before Nier. Please, said Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Nier and threw his hand in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is fake. Everyone knows I'm the real one around here. In respect to please, given the free statues, and return to the frozen state of silence once again in the city. When you consider all the statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Near furrowed his eyebrows and considered his answer. And one of them is real, the others are false. Uh, the real form will always speak the truth, the false ones will only speak lies. Uh, this one said something about a nightmare. I don't think he can awaken from the nightmare. This one said that this one was fake. Um. Okay, wait, hold. On. Like this one said that he's real. He then said, you're not real, I'm real. He then said, you're not real, I'm real. Uh, we'll only speak lies. This is hard. I don't want to look. I don't want to look at the guide. It's just, I'm real. No, you're not. I'm real. No, you're not. I'm real. Wait. Okay. No. He tells him that he isn't real. Like Beta tells Alpha, "You're not real. I am." But then he sa he says. You're not the real one. I am the real one. 
Beta. Gotta assist that. Let's say if he lied. No, he told the truth. Then he lied. But and he would have lied, but if he lied and he told the truth. And of course he he gamma and alpha lied. I don't is there a is there like a, a reason for this like I don't get it like Okay, no, but... But this... One is speaking the truth. He's saying... That he's a liar. But he's saying that he's a liar. In that case, wouldn't that be like... Because he tells him that he's real, so that makes the fit. That makes his he, Gamma says that Beta isn't real. If that's true, right? Wouldn't that mean that he's also giving truth to the fact that Beta says that Alpha isn't real? It can't be Gamma then. No, for sure it can't. I I don't think it can. Um. Jesus Christ. But it's beta. No, it's beta. It's beta for sure. No, because one is telling the truth. If we consider the fact that because he's saying he's the real one, but then he's fake and he's fake. Therefore, what he says is it's him. It's beta. The real one is beta. Oh no. <laughs> I really hope that I got that right. Uh, through Dull or uh, Nier's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence, he was really relieved to see Vice nodding it. Yes! 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 If Alpha were telling the truth, be uh, began. Oh, he'll explain it. Oh, awesome. Le le began Vice in the dry tones of the lecturer. Beta and Gamma would be fakes, but in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta's fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Fuck yeah, fuck yes. I feel, I, I feel so smart. I feel so smart. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta's calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling the truth. That's yes, 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 yes. I've never. I'm, I'm actually so happy. Right? Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Let's presume that beta, beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be the real. Yes, exactly. As Vice finished the ex this, his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust while Beta sprang alive once more. Congratulations, Villager, said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to have waiting has uh, arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the Villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable near pulled him to his feet. Why do you have a dream like this? asked Vice. Have you been to the city before? The villagers slowly looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures, the dull landscape, then shook his head. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this, but at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, wanted near, just like the mayor. The vague sense of unease that struck in years near during the mayor's dream spread once more into his mind. <sighs> that was rough. I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you. Okay, there. Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. There's only three, mate. I think three. I have had enough wordplay to last yeah, a lifetime. Same. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Yeah, no, it, 
I mean, see before, it's what we saw in the beginning, right? That was in a only slight post-apocalyptic world. This is like, this is like post-post-apocalyptic, like we're over the phase where it's like an apocalypse in the same sense. So I think that's where we've seen it before. That's insane. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here, I have something for you. Fate. Wow, this looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown. Okay. But we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. Okay, let's see if it's any good. Um... No, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks ass. I mean, I have it now, at least. So, you know, that's something. Okay. Yeah, my word thing isn't that high. I don't know how to get that. I might switch that up at some point, but... Okay. Let's go back, I think. I'll save first. How long did that take? I feel like that took a while. Like, you know? Yeah, it did. I think that took a lot of the energy out of me. <laughs> I did like the last one because I got it right without looking at anything. So, how oh. was the village? Oh, it sucked. Oh. It was truly magnificent. There are no words. Really. <laughs> Neat. Let's get back to Popola. She'll probably want to know what's going on in there. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll head to her and then I'll be it for sure. Look out, sheep. Holy shit. That sounded gruesome. Let us talk to Popola to see what she s is uh, saying about this whole ordeal of ours. Yes. Sad trees, truly. Devastating. <laughs> Dev devastating things. Oh, Popola, I am home. Are you home? The death dream certainly is a strange illness. Yeah. Yeah, it was something <laughs> yeah. all right. Even I, with my natural yeah. love for words, have no desire to visit that place ever again. Yeah. You guys did well. You've been cool. making a lot of long trips lately. I, Are you sure I, I you're really not haven't. pushing yourself too hard? I really I'm okay. I can't just sit around all day while Yona's sick, after all. True. If you say so. So, anything I can do for you? Well, I suppose there is one thing I could use a hand with. Okay. Have you heard about our plans to repair the canal? No. The work probably won't happen for a while. But once it's done, we can use the canal for trade and travel and all kinds of useful things. Canal? Is that where I can use the boats that are very conveniently placed in, placed in like every single river around that I've seen? Unfortunately, however, we're a bit behind oh, schedule at the moment. Okay. If you're willing to help out, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. No problem. What do you need? Great. So, the man I originally asked to help on this project hasn't shown up for work in a few days. Okay. I'm starting to get a little worried. So, yeah. maybe you can head over to Seafront and check up on him? I'll mark the location of... He always carries a red bag over his shoulder. Okay. So Got it. Got it. Is that like a part of my quests? No. That's like a main quest thing. Well, alright. Um. Near has once again been replicated and i read like five novels this time great 